Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so first, I need to say, and I hope the people in this room can appreciate, I am incredibly proud of and grateful for the work of our UH team that mitigated what would have been the devastating effects of the Senate budget. The proposed faculty cuts were the largest and of greatest concern, but there were other serious cuts proposed as well, including a substantial loss of staff jobs. The impact on UH, our students, and the people of Hawaii would have been severe had those provisions of the Senate budget been adopted by the conference committee, then passed by both legislative chambers, and then enacted with the signature of the governor. We made it a priority to reverse those cuts as quickly as possible and we succeeded. We obviously differed with UPA on a legislative strategy in a number of ways. We did engage fully and directly with the legislature at multiple levels to reverse those cuts before they made it into the conference budget. I think everyone in this room knows the adage about making legislation and making sausage. This was not pretty, but we did what was necessary and at that final budget conference committee hearing where it was announced that the cuts were reversed in what was, I believe, an unprecedented gesture, the Ways and Means Committee of the Senate actually presented a lay for Vice President Young, thank you, Calvert, and they thanked him for his leadership and work in bringing us through a complicated and highly political situation. None of us wanted to be there, none of us savored what happened, but we were committed to get through it. I also want to thank a number of other members of the UH team who are absolutely essential in getting us through this. That includes Vice President Sirmos, Vice Chancellor Bruno, Associate Vice Chancellor McCreary, Vice President Strainey, and almost every single Manoa Dean and their staff who provided detailed follow-up information so we could correct the misconceptions that underlay that uh, Senate budget and we did so under extreme time constraints. We also differed with UPA on communication strategy. UPA uh, believed it was necessary and appropriate to notify the occupants of those 121 positions if they were filled. We did not and from our perspective causing this level of personal stress and alarm to the specific hardworking and valued faculty was unwarranted for two reasons. First, our plan was to reverse the cuts. We did not want to appear overconfident, but we felt, based on the guidance we got, that we would be able to do so, and we did. Second, the collective bargaining agreement for faculty provides specific, specific provisions for retrenchment that would have had to be followed if 121 positions in funding had been eliminated. So it wasn't necessarily the mm -hmm. occupants of those positions who would have been impacted with the loss of their jobs. Nevertheless, the fact that the Senate even passed such a budget is alarming. It means we have a lot of work ahead of us to help the legislature and others understand what their university does each and every day for the people of Hawaii, what our faculty across the system do to make that possible, <laughs> and how they do it, which is not like other state workers that the legislature oversees. We also need to remind the community about what the Hawaii Constitution says about governance and internal management of UH and how that language arose from the needs of the state for economic revitalization that they looked to the university for in the 1990s and still do today. We did not shy from talking away, shy away from talking about any of that through the process, both in public and in private but that was not the centerpiece of our work to quickly reverse those cuts. And we are also cognizant of the fact from a governance or so-called autonomy perspective that if the cut were simply 121 faculty positions and 13 million without reference to specific position numbers, we would have had to deal with that as well as we have in the past with other legislative budget cuts. And our goal was to reverse those. We do have some lessons learned from the experience, and I fully acknowledge we should have communicated earlier. I had a conversation with the Manoa deans yesterday. I apologize, I own those mistakes, and I apologize again to all of those who wanted to hear sooner
that we were working to reverse those cuts from the day that they were announced. Um, but given the circumstances, I do not regret engaging directly and fully with the legislature to reverse the cuts, and I am proud to stand with our team that worked so hard to make that so. Our work this session is not over. Um, as of when I checked this morning, the final worksheets on the conference operating budget are still not released. We have a number of key priorities pending, including our highest priority new request for the operating budget, the extension of our successful Hawaii Promise program to help students with financial need at our four-year universities. We also have desperate need for adequate CIP funding to reverse the decline in the condition of our buildings, particularly at Manoa, and provide the facilities our students and faculty need and deserve to support 21st century teaching, learning, and research. And I agree with the chair, we must also look ahead. I am really heartened also by the testimony provided this morning by the Manoa Faculty Senate Executive Committee with whom I met on Monday afternoon, urging that this incident be a catalyst for unity within the university and suggesting a positive and collaborative path forward. Their 10 points provide a thoughtful beginning for the agenda before us. I was also extremely heartened by editorial support from our major newspaper, commentary in support of the university from one of our most knowledgeable and credible TV journalists, and a strong letter of support for the university from the Hawaii Business Roundtable that was delivered to every legislator while the sausage making was still underway. This is a strong foundation for action. And once the legislative session is over, I look forward to building on this with the Manoa Faculty Senate, the Manoa Deans, Regents, friends in the legislature, and we do have many, and others of like minds, including UPA, if they are willing, to develop a plan to remind and educate all of Hawaii regarding what we do for our students, what we do for the community, the amazing work of our faculty, what the Constitution says, and how we are accountable with the university. And just as importantly, it isn't just about stopping negativity. The legislature and community need to understand how they can help us do even more together to create the future for, for Hawaii that we all want. Clean, sustainable, grounded in aloha, with new innovations stimulating great jobs that engage our best and brightest here at home, nurturing and improving the lives of our people of Hawaii and our planet. None of this can happen without a vibrant University of Hawaii system with a well-supported, world-class faculty.